Hello, today let's make the museum from Animal Crossing New Horizons, which is perfect timing because I needed a place to put all these bones I just found. But where do we put this elegant emperor butterfly and the elusive scorpion? They go to the museum all the same. Hey studs, welcome back to Studson Studio, where today we're digging up a highly requested build from the strata of comments. I printed out a reference at the size I wanted, which is too small of a home for all of these bones, but that's okay. I'm starting out by using a box that was pretty close to the right size. What's this box from, actually? Snail cream. Sorry bug buddies and fish fans, but this museum is just a bone zone because for blathers... The bones are their money! Now I'm left with just a rectangle, but I would prefer it to be a square. I'm cutting out two door holes using the official door template as a size guide. The actual doors will be made from wood later, but make sure to save these in your scrap box of things you'll likely never use. To help set these box bones and make sure they heal straight, I'm hot gluing it back together and using popsicle sticks as a makeshift splint. Though it's still sort of a wobbly parallelogram, which is no good. So I'm introducing a new technique to help keep it 90 at each of those corners. I'm okay with these walls looking like garbage on the inside since I'm not doing a full interior. For all the brick and stonework, I'll be randomly bouncing back and forth between using two types of XPS foam. Either this pink stuff, which is housing insulation foam, or in other areas you'll see me use white foam core board from the dollar store. The main difference is that one is pink and the other is white. I oftentimes end up using too much hot glue, but I try to squirt it into a non-visible area so I can use my finger squeegee. Oh, also, I ended up making the doorway too low, so I raised it up by a half an inch to make way for the stairway here. I used a sharp blade to score in some lines, then a pencil to add a separation between the slabs of concrete. Flanking the stairs are two columns, which we'll add later, but for now, here's the two slabs that sit on either side. I thought about gluing down individual bricks, but nah. Instead, I'm going to engrave brick details into a big piece of white foam board. Just like the Ankylosaurus, we need to peel back its protective armor to get to the soft flesh inside. I have mixed feelings when it comes to making brick sheets like this. On the plus side, it saves a lot of time and it looks nicely uniform, just like in the game. But there's also a certain satisfaction that comes from the lumpy results that are produced when I punish myself by laying bricks one at a time. I'm covering up the corner columns with just a wife or thin slice of foam. And then I'm scratching in a few brick lines to finish it off. Next for the columns, I have this lovely uh, museum grade food packaging which has a very nice corrugated texture. I like this particular material because it's kind of flat on one side, so when you fold it over it kind of looks very column-like. This one came from a seaweed crisp snack, but good luck finding that exact one. Any corrugated thing should work actually. Then I'm using the world's most stiff boba straw to add some structure to the inside of this corrugation. Hot glue is not a friend to flimsy plastic like this. It is absolutely melting all the detail, so make sure if you're going to use hot glue on plastic, just hide it on the backside. More exciting chunks of foam to finish up these end caps. Everything's pretty much just rectangles, lots and lots of rectangles. And then let's take it on up to the roof. For the roof gables, go grab your favorite cereal box and stab, stab, stab the three points that make up the size of your isosceles triangle. These are just the roof bones because we're going to cover it up with brick flesh. Brick flesh, brick flesh, brick flesh, brick flesh, brick flesh, brick flesh, brick flesh. Oh, that's hard. In normal circumstances, just paperboard would be fine for a roof base, but all Animal Crossing roofs are extra thick, so they deserve an extra layer of foam board here. We are just about to the exciting shingle phase. There's just a little bit more work of stone and brick work needed to be done to finish off this mighty Brickiosaurus. All right, go grab that museum grade scrap paperboard because we're about to make some shingles. This is pretty much the definitive shingle technique, which I just learned from Eric's hobby workshop. It still takes a little while, but it's still way faster and about 90% less madness inducing. The shortcut magic here is you're not making individual shingles, you're making these shingle strips, and then you just fan out the shingles like the plates of a stegosaurus and cut off little random bits here and there to add some character. Okay, alright, now check this out. This isn't even sped up. This is real time. That's just how long it takes me. It's just that much quicker. I finished it up with a paperboard ridge cap before we add the one piece of Blathers branding on the front here. 
This is a bubble wand that I found on the ground on a walk, which has a nice little rounded beveled disc on the end. Then using a little scrap of plastic card, I sculpted out a crude little owl, then pin viced out his eyes and the five little holes on his chest, and then glued it down with some modeling cement. Normally I'd wait to do all the painting at the end, but this is such a small little detail, let's just do it now. I splotched on an acrylic cream, and then went back over the owl with a mac and cheese orange, and then added some contrast just around the owl's bod with a brown wash. Very ugly. I want the museum to feel grand, so I'm making a plateau for it to sit on top of. But to reach the plateau, we need a couple stairways, which I'm making out of pieces of foam board that are fanned out and then glued together with spray adhesive. The spray adhesive works pretty good to hold the foam together, but be careful because it also eats foam for breakfast, so try not to use too much. Just like the game, I had to opt for two stairways because, wouldn't you know it, XPS foam board just doesn't let you line up your incline with your museum entrance. Next I'm doing some terraforming, including carving out a spot for a waterfall, followed by some edge beveling and carving out some random chunks of dirt for our sedimentary layers. I also carved in some brick texture for the foundation, and that's pretty much all I'm going to do before adding dirt to this whole thing later. I want to add a cobblestone pathway to the front of the museum, which I'm going to make using this not very good air dry clay. I am under a curse to use this clay until it's entirely gone, even though every time I use it, it cracks. I know there's ways to use it in such a way that it doesn't crack, but most of the time the cracks are free weathering. <laughs> After rolling out a path and making it look distressed by earthquake, I gave it a smooth and then a slice and then laid it down on a nice bed of white glue to help seal it in place. For the very unrealistic knife edge, I'm blending it down onto the ground or completing the cobblestone texture down the side. And then it was time for modeling paste, so I'm pulling out a big goop scoop. Yeah. And then we're going to mix it with some water until it's more of a goop soup. Yeah. The purpose of this nice creamy bisque is to augment the foam texture with something more akin to stone and brick. I'm frosting the entire building with the paste and then stippling it using the ragged edge of a torn paper towel. This removes the brush strokes because brush strokes deserve to die. After that, it's ready for a classic sealant of black paint and Mod Podge, and then I'm taking it outside for a quick prime using white spray primer to tie it all together. We'll be right back to paint this soon, but first, let's get dirty. I'm laying out a bib because this is going to get messy, and here come the four horsemen that are going to bring a plague of dirt upon this land. First I spread on a layer of white glue and then sprinkled on a bunch of dirt. This is just uh, regular old dirt from my yard. I scooped it out of the ground last summer. It probably still has living things inside of it, but it's cute. It's like my own little terrarium inside a sour cream container. For the cobblestone, I'm doing an overbrush with gray, and then I'm using a dark wash to just add some contrast sparingly in a few places, and then I'm doing it not sparingly at all and just saturating the whole thing. And then I thought it looked kind of boring because everything was just the same color, so I added a light gray just to vary things up a little bit. And then I went back with the black wash one more time just to blend it all together. And after that, we're left with about 50 shades of whitish black. At this point, the dirt still looks like dirt, but dirt's not good enough. We need to add some of this cream tan to make it a little more like the New Horizons dirt. It's a subtle effect and also an optional one. I just wanted a slight dirt gradient. This blue is not the water, I'm just prepping the underside of the waterfall for later. The stairs get a very impressive overbrush in gray, a dry brush in light gray, and a contrast on just the lower step with black wash. And you better believe we got exciting colors for this whole museum. I'm talking fresh hues like khaki for the brick perimeter, a, a, like a grayish khaki for the steps here, and just wait, we're going with like cream or it's like an ivory sort of cream for the entire, just like all of it. It's the same color. And try not to rip your pants off because some of these bricks are gonna be, um, uh oh, this one is called Skin Tone. Dear Anita's all-purpose acrylics, there are more human shades than Mr. Clean Caucasian. For the aqua-colored roof, I mixed together a few squirts of green and blue that I'll never be able to replicate ever again. I like to use the cheapest paint possible so you get this cool effect where you can still see the original gray color below, so make sure to do at least two coats. Then we're grazing just the edges of the shingles with a slightly lighter version of our original aqua, which I just added white to. 
and then I'm using a slightly watered down version of a black wash to tile all of our cream bricks together with our skin tone Caucasian bricks. Anita, if this is your skin tone paint, don't be shy, put some more. I also added a black wash under each row of shingles to simulate shadow. Then vigorously shake this makeup brush over the entire museum, pathway, and steps. This is adding a dry brush of ivory to help the grimy black wash areas pop again with a splash of white. It's a subtle effect, but it's, it's doing something. And this is how you take your model from generic museum to fan art in one step. And now if you follow me through here, we'll start making the doors. For each door, I'm using two layers of this one millimeter balsa wood, though scrap cereal box would work just as well, you don't need fancy wood. I'm saving the cutouts from each panel and then trimming them slightly smaller to give the look of a routed door. Let's slather on way too much watered down brown paint and then compensate with just a dry brush of a lighter brown. For the door handles, I'm super gluing on a couple of earring backs and then I'm hot gluing the doors in place in an inviting yet spooky ajar position. And now back to the plateau for some grass times. I'm spreading on a layer of watered down glue and then using my static grass applicator to put on a carpet of green. I will never not get a kick out of how each blade of grass sticks up using the power of electricity. Not every blade of grass is going to stick though, so make sure to save the rest for later. Here it is all cleaned up, and I'm sending the rest of these friends back into the pot for next time. For the waterfall effect, I thought maybe I could mix some white PVA glue with some blue paint and then spread it out on a piece of parchment paper to make something that kind of looks like a flowing waterfall, but nah, it didn't really work out. Kind of looks like fabric or something, which is kind of cool in itself, but instead I'm going to try using hot glue. I used a toothpick to help guide the water into an undulating water pose. Then I painted one side blue and added gloss Mod Podge to make it a little bit extra shiny and to add more ripples. To fill in the gaps on my hot glue waterfall in the dirt, I used a little more gloss Mod Podge. And speaking of gaps, there were a couple to be filled on the two stairways here. Just fill your nasty holes with dirt and that should fix it. And here's the hot glue Mod Podge waterfall after it's dry. For the red banner that goes here and here, here's a medium sized banner with sleeves that I'll use to trim off just a couple tiny banners that I'll glue on the front. Technically, we only see one side of the museum in the game, so that's only two banners, but since this is a 3D model, we get to be really adventurous and add more banners on the other side of the museum. I stiffened up the fabric with watered down Mod Podge, then dry brushed it with pink to catch some of the details. From my gelato container full of shrubs, I'm picking out a few of the roundest nuggies I have and then hot gluing them in place. After a few droplets with the sweet milk of watered down Mod Podge, I'm dusting on a little yellow fine turf to add a highlight to each bush. And since I had a nice pretty pink paint, these are going to be hydrangea shrubs. And I might not be building a full interior on this, but I did want to have sort of a platform on the inside so that when you take the museum off, there's a place where you could have a display. This is just various layers of foam board and coffee stirring sticks and popsicle sticks and a little more of that red t-shirt. To keep the rug nice and flat, I'm giving it a spritz of watered down Mod Podge and then hot gluing it on the base. And then to finish off the exhibit, go find a couple of unknown mammal vertebrae you found at the beach. And since I had an open piece of real estate on the front, why not place a little Kentrosaurus on the front lawn? This dino might not be in the game, and that's because Nintendo really f***ed up this one. Hello everyone, suddenly it's the next day, and my partner surprised me with his little blathers she sculpted. I still need to paint him, but I'll have a nice home in front of this museum. Before we roll the beauty shots, make sure you leave a comment letting me know what you'd like to see me crap. Oh, well, we've got a suggestion here already, let's read it. Dear Mr. Studio, my name's Bill and I have a channel called Bill Making Stuff. Um, I make stuff on it. The reason I'm writing is to talk about the blatant ages I receive from your content. Being a 76 year old Englishman, I have no idea what you're going on about half the time. Animal Crossroads, this, Breath of the Wind, that. How about you make something from the Golden Age of Gaming? Classic games like Metroid on the NES, you know, Double Dragon. Games from a time when gaming was manly. Manly games like Kirby's Adventure. So judging by that angelic voice and those soft childish hands, you're like, what, 12 years old? So I don't hold it against you. Let's make something together. Let's make something cool. Something from a time when cool wasn't ironic. Something from a time when all you needed were 8 bits. Anyway, what do you think? Let me know. This is Bill from Bill Making Stuff. P.S. Love your work. Don't change a thing. And where do you get your hand moisturizer from? Love you. Bye. Okay, Mr. Making Stuff. Let's do it. 
All right, everyone, tune in next week to catch Studson and Bill making stuff, making stuff. Bo, Cody, Stereo, Steel, Pwn, Becky, Rowe, Roman, Dame, Ray, Peters, Weister, Chloe, Jane, Corving, Emma L, Peyton, Taylor, Dominique, Aaron Hill, Nathan, Ayers, Brooks, Eggleston, Kaya, BKD, Knudsen, Tanya, Etha, Michael, Yoda, Matthew, Wintham, Kimby, Bailey, Hannah, Barina, Winter, Shark, Kai, Jenny, Terry, Jim, Jiminy, Jim, Jiminy, Angelica, Dunlavy, Amanda Boyd, and Emily, Neva, Joe, Timideski, Shiny Girl, I see rice, Melissa, or let's take it lower. Zach and Cali, Marsh, Better, Mousetrap, Guitars, Ali, Akiyama, One Baddie, Mugabe of Hearts, Adele, Sloan, Holly, Hugh, Sarah, Guajardo, Angela, Era, Manila, Tim Weaving, Sky, Avro, Lizard Breath, Mumbles, Disney, Manga, Lecker, Jason Spriggs, Kagan, Sarah, Face, Big Schlunker, Tracy, Mickey, Enzi, Jordan, Gar, MC, Zayn, Sean, Kelly, Art School, Drop Out, Drop Out. Jesse Maloney, Rosie Davis, Janelle Hugel, Brian David Gilbert, Castor Rock, Carleen McDougal, McLeo Cow, Vix Quill, Quill Violet and Gill, Maria Lavelle, Lay Rawl, Chris Morell, Shay Fox, Cisco Sundstrom, BR Ocean, Take Mel, Zen Petro Audium, Arcana Fauna, Lauren Prince, Carla Segura, Larry Be Wary, Honey Chan, Goldie Gareza, Leah Wingard, Seth Lindgren, Danielle Medina, Nicole Royce, Cameron Workman, Eugenio Mendoza, Charlie, Dave, Gavin, Richie, Penny Drake, Richard Cook, Prodigy, Wide, Mickey, the Doll Parade, 